namely proximate composition and molecular phylogeny of chandanama of ujni wetland of maharashtra india for this work i have selected the fish called chandanama which is dominantly found in is like india pakistan bangladesh and ujni reservoir is one of the reservoir which was constructed on bhima river and bhima river is originate in the western ghats of maharashtra called sahyadri So, Ujni Reservoir is one of the important reservoir for the districts like Pune and Solapur. It provides irrigation facilities as well as fishes to the local fishermen and serves as a vast economic importance to the rural rural peoples. Then, the diversity of Ujni Reservoir shows presence of about 60 species of 36 different genera and 15 families and six order. This was the work done by. Sarode and Kilare in year 2010 This is the fish called Chandanama which is commonly known as elongated glassy perchlet and i have selected this fish for the study This fish has a popular food uh, food fish having good consumer preference and this fish serves as a ornamental fish when catch uh, when it is catch live and can be sold to the ornamental fish dealers or aquarium fish traders with a more economical benefits to the fisherman community during this work i have work, I, i i will work on the dna barcoding means molecular phylogeny of the fish as well as during this work there will be assessment of the diversity of the ujni reservoir fish and nutritional profiling of the selected fish chandanama objectives of research include study of physico chemical parameters of ujni reservoir ujni reservoir water is a vast biodiversity and the physico chemical parameters will be assessed and the study of fish diversity of ujni reservoir from selected sites and different sites of ujni reservoir will be selected for the study of fish diversity and study of nutritional profiling of chandanama chandanama is the fish selected for the study and we, i will go to nutritional profiling of chandanama then the study of molecular phylogenetic of chandanama the methodology is includes collection will be done by standard gears and crafts and identification will be done by standard keys then the physico chemical parameters will be assessed by following standard protocols and the estimation of nutritional profiling will be done by standard protocols then molecular phylogenetics studies will be also done by standard procedures and protocols then the need of study why to conduct this study ujni reservoir has importance for the farmers as well as fisherman community from pune and solapur district the last attempt of study of fish diversity of ujni reservoir was made in 2010 by saroda and khilare so the current work will be beneficial for the current status of fish diversity of the reservoir and to check the nutritional profiling of the chandanama fish and also molecular phylogenetic study will add more knowledge about this fish as no more work in the in this field is is done before these are some of the research references i have collected that's all about the topic thank you very much are not stations are not fixed rate but uh, after serving i will fix the stations uh, near indapur indapur dist uh, indapur tehsil yes ma'am okay to study the evolutionary history of that fish yes ma'am not not molecular phylogeny is not studied before yes yes ma'am
throughout the western world so we didn't cite it any of the uh, other references other than sarodhya uh, and kila no sir sarodhya we have been described many times i think we have to work very simply yes sir and not only about the chanda in your reference we have to mention how many species of fresh water species whose molecular phylogeny is completed so far how many family how many genus then what is the significance of this specific fish with reference to its uh, family how it is deviating mm, so Yes, sir. In synopsis, I have given. Okay, okay. How the paper will come to know? I am on how many years we are going to complete that research. Okay. So this is more important. Yes, sir. Here, oh. right? Yes. What is in the first six months? Then what is in the next six months? Then there are four. So it should be in the present. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. sites will be selected after the surveying sir at indapur indapur lo mc ke jodi don warsha par hoisa mc sir is a project complete kiya tha mc is a project 
यस सर मैं शिकल होती सर इट चेंजेस फ्रॉम रीजन टू रीजन और वॉटर बॉडीज मॉलिकुलर फाइलोजनी मैम यस मैम रेफरेंस आई हैव कलेक्टेड
हेलो टॉपिक हेलो ओके सो हैव अ वेरी नाइस आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट ओवर यो रिस्पेक्टेड डिग्नेटरीज एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनर्स माय रिसर्च गाइड रिसर्च कोऑर्डिनेटर्स ऑल द टीचर्स एंड माय रिसर्च मेट्स I am Mubin Sheikh, and I am going to present my pre-PhD presentation on a topic: Integrated Pest Management of Thrips Tabaki on Onion Crop in Rahata Taluka, District Ahmednagar. But before going to start anything else regarding with my topic, just let's get introduced with the title first of all. That integrated pest management is nothing but the management of the pest by utilizing and using all the possible reasons, all possible sources by using. the biological control chemical control mechanical control and uh, all types of the control here including uh, means all integration and combination of all the possible sources in re regarding in regards with the pest management of the thrips tabaki now let me aware you about the thrips tabaki is the common nuisance amongst the farmers and is the major pest found in the maharashtra for the onion crops not only onion but it covers nearly almost all vegetable crops but it attacks more prominently and profoundly on the onion plants that's why i have chosen here the onion crop in rohata taluka especially and uh, from the district ahmednagar my the name of my guide is uh, ravindra sheth sagar sir and my place of work is modern college of arts commerce and science ganesh king okay so before learning the materials and math methods and some related basics of this topic just let us introduce that whatever points i am going to cover in the introduction here first of all the distribution and the status of the thrips tabaki then the host range here the damage symptoms and the bionomics means its morphological features and innovativeness of the topics and relevance of the topics and the objectives and applicability of the work so these are the eight major bases based on which my introduction is based uh, so first of all let's get started with the distribution and status so as i told you earlier earlier that it is found worldwide and is found throughout india as a major pest of onion lm sepa is the biological name of onion and garlic so these are the two major plants upon which it feed there are the two larval stages which feeds and having the rasping mouth which rasps and uh, which sucks the sap out out of the leaf and they can damage the plant by the discoloration by 
deformities and by what we can say the reducing its marketability and by reducing its bulb size and uh, overall the market yield. So this is just about its present status. Now as far as the host range, actually even though I, cho I have chosen the onion crop as a host for the uh, thrips tabaki and how does it having the uh, implications and negative impact on the onion crop, but it is having major host range, so it covers all the vegetable crops. Uh, you can say here the onion, the garlic, cotton, cabbage, cauliflower, potato, cucumber, tobacco, brinjal, tomato, pio, pineapple, chilies, and radish, and grapes. Sort of which, uh, the, for, as far as the onion crop is concerned, onion vegetable crop is concerned, that this uh, thrips tabaki is, for that thrips tabaki, the major host out of all this is nothing but the onion plant. So that's why I have just taken here, the first of all, the onion plant and the garlic. Uh, but that, uh, my area of research is in the, uh, for that onion crop. So how, uh, how is it having, the negative impact on this plant. So what are the damage symptoms? How can we know about its, the uh, negative implications of the, uh, those uh, larval stages and the sucking mouth parts? And it is having only two instars of the bulb size of the onion, which can reduce its marketability and its overall quality. Present, uh, and a uh, lot experience that when I was observing those, uh, you know, the four naked eyes. That's why I, I had to take the, use and utilization of that, those lenses, uh, magnifying lenses. And the second instar is somewhat about by the larval stages, okay. But as far as their fruits and some other upkey can also have the negative impact on the three, uh, the onion crops. After this uh, host range, sorry, and damage symptoms, these are some other damage symptoms. You can easily identify the differences amongst uh, the crops of having infected with the thrips tabaki and another plant is completely miss fresh green uh, leaves. Okay, so they usually congregate and uh, you can see the gregarious population at the base or at the bottom of the leaves of onion. Uh, so leaves of attacked plants turn silvery white, curl, wrinkle and gradually dry from the tip downwards. So plants do not uh, form the bulbs nor do the flowers set seed. So leaf tip discoloration and drying is the main symptom. As I told you in the introduction only, the discoloration, drying, and uh, what we can say that uh, reducing the marketability, reducing the bulb size, because when uh, it pierces and sucks the sap out of leaves, that time what happens actually, that you can see the white streaking, streaks marks, uh, streaks are there, or uh, uh, the, this discoloration can uh, minimize the rate of photosynthesis and because of this, uh, uh, you know, reduction in the rate of photosynthesis and this, uh, you know, the discoloration, the bulb size uh, gets decreased and it can have the loss as far as the economic point of view or the marketability or overall quality of its uh, onion bulb. So it is very important to keep it in mind that how does it have the negative implications on economics. So this is about the bionomics that uh, as I'm going, I'm, I'm going to study on this thrips tabaki, so I feel that it's a very urgent need to study its morphological features. So these are some of the bionomics or biological or morphological features that uh, the adults are slender, yellowish brown and measure about just one millimeter in its length. Males are wingless, females have long, narrow and strap-like wings. Mostly actually the population in population uh, females are more, uh, so you can say that in some of the countries there are only one as to two ratio for the male as to female. Uh, and in some countries you can say that one as to 1000 means behind 1000 female there is only one male, sometimes one as to one lakh. Okay, so female population is more, uh, the underlying principle or exact reason is not uh, known yet. Uh, so nymphs resemble the adult in shape and color, but are wingless and slightly smaller. So this pest is active throughout the year, and it is, uh, and the onion crop is the biennial plant, perennial plant. So this pest is active throughout the, uh, throughout the year. So there is very intimate relationship between, or close relationship between what we can say, the thrips tabaki and uh, onion crop. 
So it breeds on onion and garlic from November to May and migrates to cotton and other summer uh, host plants and breeds till September. These are some other bionomics here. Let me take to you to the innovativeness of the topic that what newly I'm going to add in it or uh, uh, how can I have some innovations in it. That I'm thinking about this as far as the controlling methods are concerned that in biological control use of eco-friendly and cost-effective methods like use of ladybug and grease lace wing. So if I release those insects so they can easily feed upon those uh, larva without damaging or without having any co damage or parallel damage or to other, you know, uh, healthy tissues of the plants and some other you know, crops, okay. Uh, so in chemical control, use of biochemicals like mixed aqueous Vitania uh, mahagoni and Tamarandus indica along with N. hexen. Uh, so I will just take the leaf extract of the, these two plants. Actually these uh, plants were never used, okay, in chemical control for the thrips tabaki. Some other plants like Azar Director indica and uh, uh, some other uh, datura and all. So these uh, plants extract were used, but newly I'm going to add as far as the chemical control is concerned. In cultural control that how can we cultivate or how can we advise to the farmers to cultivate their onion crops. So the, if, you, if they change the way they are cultivating now, if, if they change or modify the traditional methods of the cultivations of onion crops, so they can easily avoid the nuisance created by this thrips tabaki. So uh, mixed cropping like maize and onion together is in a single row. Okay, it's because uh, we see if you can see the host range of the thrips tabaki, then it covers near almost all vegetable crops. Okay, garlic, uh, tomato, potato, but uh, it, it is not found or available on the maize plant. So if you just cultivate the garlic and onion together, okay, in a row, then there will be the major nuisance or there will be the major uh, economic loss because yeah, you are giving them, uh, you know, the ready-made invitation cards that you come and eat us. So this is what uh, it is. It will be having uh, the negative impact on those two plants. So maize uh, is, uh, or this thrips tabaki don't usually like th this plant maize. That's why uh, we must have to uh, change our cultural methods for the croppings or cultivations. Okay. So in mechanical control, now this is somewhat uh, used process, but for this plant and in our in my region. Uh, this is somewhat new in mechanical control use of handmade yellow and sky blue straps to check an adult population of thrips. As insects are very much attracted towards the color, so I will just uh, make uh, with the help of my hand these straps, yellow and uh, sky blue straps, and I will put over in between two plants like this. Uh, so instead of uh, just going to the bottom of leaves, uh, so they will attract toward those colors, and these are the very sticky straps. So we can uh, reduce the population of adult especially because adult uh, is found on uh, the upper portion of leaves and the two stars of their larva are found in, at the bottom of or fleshy part portion of leaves. So after getting this, uh, uh, the four innovations in these uh, uh, four controls. So what is actually the relevance of the topic to the contemporary era or what we can see in, in our days? How is, this, is it connected to our daily routine life? that uh, and how is it related to our the human beings that systemic insecticidal sprays like acetam uh, acetamiprid and uh, thiamethoxam okay flagship have been shown to be less effective against western flower thrips in nymphs and adults so uh, the species of the thrips which i have chosen here is the thrips tabaki but in uh, western countries or what you can in european countries the western flower thrip is uh, also one of the another species of the thrip uh, for, the, for the study of which means I found in the research papers that these systemic insecticidal sprays or the, most of the chemical controls uh, proved out to be or it turned out to be the less effective against western flower thrips. Okay. And the, uh, they are also the example of thrips or they are also these species of thrips. Okay. Uh, so I am avoiding the use of this well uh, that uh, disproved or what we can say not universally accepted uh, chemicals. Now they have piercing and sucking mouth parts, but they do not feed exclusively in the phloem sieve tubes. So instead they feed within the mesophyll and epidermal cells of leaf tissues. More specifically, they feed on the plants by inserting their tubular stylets into cells and withdrawing the cellular contents. So this feeding behavior may inhibit the effectiveness of the systemic insecticides against western flower thrips. 
and thus for onion thrip this is my just conclusion here that if it is having those uh, uh, you know it is not proving or it is it is turning out to be the less effective against the western flower thrips uh, that's why i'm avoiding the use of those other uh, chemicals or other controlling methods so integrated pest management for these thrips became need of a time rather to rely and depend on a single control measures so that's why the topic name is the integrated pest management so i'm using all this um, so why i'm choosing this what are the objectives okay so these four five objectives i have put in front of me that the, to assess and evaluate an efficacy of the different types of control methods in thrips management to assist the local farmers and the horticulturists to adopt innovative and effective methods to control onion thrips and to motivate and to guide people because i will just come in front of the mob and to i will just collect and gather the farmers and i will give them uh, you know the instructional lecture they uh, that are uh, what to do and what not to do in order to increase their marketability and overall means i will just directly enter into the society and will help them out and to emphasize an eco friendly and cost effective approach to control the onion thrips and to promote integrated pest management practices amongst local farmers so they will also use all possible sources because most of the farmers usually utilize uh, usually approach or adopt only one kind of uh, you know the control methods and they fail to achieve their desired target so we must have to choose uh, all possible outcomes or management strategies and uh, uh, you know the practices or policies so this is what are the objectives and now materials and methods so the first method obviously that thrips collection i will collect the thrips out so i collected a few there a uh, few days i mean few weeks back here so samples will be chosen randomly and regularly every week so each sample consists of five leaves okay so i will just take uh, one to two crops only it is enough because in one means what we can say that um, crop or amongst I mean, in between five leaves you can find hundreds of thrips there okay but you need to have that visualization with the help of the magnifying lens and each sample will be put in polythene bag and will be taken to the laboratory for counting the insect density and density of uh, thrips tabac insects will be counted under dissecting microscope using two square inch or disc leaf okay so i will just cut those leaves and i will just count this two square inch leaf and uh, each of those two square inch leaf i will just go on counting go on counting and i will just come to the conclusion that this plant is affected with or infected with uh, the 20 more than 20 thrips if it goes more than 20 or 30 so we can say that it is completely brutal loss for that particular plant or that farmland so uh, you can see here the owner of this farm so i approached him and uh, just requested him to visit uh, his farm day miss um, per week okay so i collected two to three farmers some of my students have also the uh, farm of onion so i used to visit it regularly and uh, do this so the next uh, method is the pest identification so, uh, so after taking to the laboratory so i will just take them out in uh, we can say a jar or a, a uh, means i just made the, a container there okay i brought a container and uh, i just give them then uh, a natural atmosphere by putting a soil and some other parameters like temperature and ph still actually i'm working on that how can i regulate those temperature and ph that they require actually in their natural atmosphere and how can provide them uh, their natural atmosphere in laboratory itself so this uh, this is the paste id key so if you click upon it so can i have a mouse there so you can get to the form uh, here so how can i identify that this is the thrips tabaki because specifically i am choosing the thrips tabaki tabaki is the name of species there are uh, more than 300 species are found of the genus thrips but i have chosen only thrip, uh, tabaki uh, so these are the uh, photo guide for this uh, some other uh, thrips uh, species are also there and here you can see uh, the thrips tabaki is there okay some portion of it uh, is not available due to some less connectivity of an internet so let me take to the slide again and these are the paste monitoring and counting uh, form is there so i will count 
and how will assess the damage that how much uh, uh, it has affected that particular plant. So this is what uh, I will just fill it up with uh, the information whatever I have got practically and uh, based on which I will just assess it. <coughs> Next. Thrips collection and sampling and uh, pest identification pest monitoring in vitro culture methods. So after collecting, um, uh, I was uh, I was just thinking that to bring a pot or a bucket, a cut bucket, uh, and I will just pour a soil in it, and I will cultivate few crops there in laboratory itself. Okay, means on a short uh, scale or a small scale, I will just use, I, I will just check out my you know, control methods that whether it is having any effect or not. Okay, the way I thought previously in ob objectives. So if it is fulfilling my objective, so I will use in uh, you know the semi-large. Uh, scale and then I will use on field directly. I, I have told that farmer, two to three farmers, that I will come to you after six months after uh, getting myself sure that it is effective, this method is effective, and then I will use on it large scale. So, these are some other cultural, mechanical, and biological controls. So, as far as the cultural control, these are some varieties of onion that ALR, three robot, uh, three. 33-1 and Kadiri 3 IGCS 86031. So uh, these are some resistant varieties. So they resist naturally. So they have uh, earned the inherent capacity, ability to resist the attack of the thrips. So if you use this, so it, it is better. Uh, but no, not don't, don't rely on this method, actual cultural control. I will just advise like this. So mechanical control, uproot and destroy severely infected plants, setting up of yellow and blue sticky straps at the rate of 12 per hectare in the field will check the thrips population, will reduce the uh, thrips population. And these are some biological controls other than the green lace wing and ladybird are my favorite uh, bio methods for the biology um, um, control methods. But the conserved biogens like flower bugs, uh, praying mantis, longhorn grasshoppers, dry, uh, dragonflies, spiders, so without having any co-parallel damage to the onion plant, so they will just eat those larvae and adult of the thrips because this is their uh, favorite food. And conserve predators like uh, Scamnos, uh, Nubilis, uh, Aureus, and uh, these some other examples are also there. So, uh, so I will use not only just the insect, but some of the, uh, these are other predators are also there, which we can use for the biological control. But major, my major emphasis on the ladybug and uh, green lace wing. So these are some other ch chemicals uh, which uh, <coughs> I am uh, using with the different uh, formulations like uh, formulations of agro agrochemicals like seed treatment with the imidia clopreid 70 WS uh, against the aphids, leaf hoppers and thrips as well up to 8 weeks. Uh, Malathion is also proving some effective against those uh, what we can say thrips uh, population. EC means here uh, emulsified concentrate here SL means soluble um, here, yes, yeah, electro here the EC and uh, these uh, uh, yeah, SLR, these are some formulations and some abbreviations for using agrochemical uh, liquids. So, monocoroptophus uh, 320 ml mixed with neem oil, uh, 1 liter, and 1 kilogram of soap powder. So, these chemicals are easily available. So, why I have just collected this? Uh, because uh, I felt that it is easily available or it can be uh, cheap uh, in its, uh, ec what we can say, expenses. So uh, after, but the minor, uh, major focus is on the biological and the mechanical control rather than the chemical control because already it, uh, it had proved out to be the less effective. Then what is expected outcome for this? <clears throat> So this, this study will provide a fundamental knowledge of pest management to the local masses, especially this is very important uh, because most, of, most often times uh, the farmers listen to some other uh, owners of uh, or uh, the, what we can say, the agrochemical, uh, they, they don't approach to the scientific or agrochemical person, but some other person and they don't know about uh, pest management. How do you may, how actually they mean by the post pest management? So this study will provide them a basic knowledge about the pest management first of all and it will help to understand the growing pattern of thrips by in vitro culturing. So if I am growing them in a laboratory, so it will help me also to understand how does it grow and uh, 
uh, how does it feed on those leaves and uh, how it uh, br brings about the economic loss. And this study will innovate and evolve the strategy to mitigate with the thrips. So it is the major nuisance, as I told you, very common, major, and the most uh, common enemy of the onion plant is the thrip. Okay, and this is only, for onion crop, this is the only major insect, not other than this. Okay, it will encourage the farmers not to rely on conventional control methods, but to use our own methods. Okay, so by avoiding the traditional methods, we can use our own innovative methods. Development of cultural methods to cultivate the crop and to enhance the market value and yield. And finally, I am hoping, hopefully, that uh, I can formulate a new pesticide to registering a patent. This is my year-wise plan of work. So in uh, four months of the first year, I will just go on survey and collect and culture the onion thrips like I am doing. Actually, I started this work. And uh, the next four months, morphological and behavioral study of onion thrips. So I'll just keenly observe their uh, behavioral pattern or morphological study. And then study of growth pattern. So once I get to know or once I uh, just get habituated uh, to the growing pattern of the onion thrips, then I can assess or I can guess uh, what can be the controlling methods I have to adopt. So in second year, I will just start on controlling the me controlling methods like in first four months of the second year, biological control methods, and second four months of the second year, cultural and mechanical control, and by uh, using all this. So whatever major benefits I am getting from which control method, so after assessing and uh, evaluating which control method is proving out to be or turning out to be the effective, based on that, I will integrate all these control methods directly on field, okay? And then finally, I will just collect the data and uh, I will analyze the data, okay? I will put it in the uh, logical sequence and uh, regular manner, scientific manner, then I will compile it and then I will uh, submit my research synopsis finally. So this is all about my plan, just, this is just the plan and I started a bit of work there and uh, whatever the references I took from some international and national status or uh, sources. So you can see uh, from my area also Ahmadnagar district, okay, uh, some of the scientists like uh, R.A. Power, B.A. Power are there. Okay, so the ESA Power, sorry, C.S. Patil and M.N. Bhalekar. Uh, so I took the references from this paper mostly, and these are some also I referred and I went through the these papers as well. I underwent also through the international papers, okay, uh, from other countries. So this is all about my plan. So if you have any questions. Uh, not actually, so that's why I, I just specified my topic, I, I can say it, it's very brief and crisp and uh, you can see here the thrips tabaki, this is only the species, the paste is very specific and the onion crop is also very specific and uh, deliberately I highlighted it, that thrips tabaki on only onion crop. Field trials, yes. yes. No, on field. And if you are saying it is like, it's like a biological, chemical, and Um, there is uh, here it is I mentioned on third four months of the th second year my plan is there to go on field here okay. yes Actually, 
it's very easy actually in Maharashtra, across the Maharashtra, this is only the paste, this is the common paste. You, find, you just get me available or you just uh, take any onion crop okay, from any farm, uh, especially in this month, summer season, they grow gregariously. Okay. Uh, so uh, those white larva of having one millimeter sized, so uh, easily you can say that this is the thrips tabaki and it is Yes, in bionomics, bionomics, I just already had given that idea here. The adults are slender and one millimeter in length. Here you can see the first and second cell. So these are the four stages. It is having the complete life cycle there. How many species totally identified? How many? Species identified? Now only so far, uh, whatever I observed i found only three tabacchi whatever the keys i got and uh, uh, whatever my study so far i got that this is the three tabacchi and it is confirmed total 6000 species identified in this and yeah. total 300 already you have mentioned on the different vegetable sets to try but i think we can add one um, Ma'am, I visited uh, more than 10 farms. 10. I found only one species, tabacchi, so far. I visited 10 farmlands. So I have that key, uh, paste identification key. So there I found that number of abdomens and uh, number of segments on their antenna. So I've observed them under compound microscope under 10x uh, low power. Yeah, I understand because you are saying that the scripts is a genus under which there are more than 300 species. So is it the case that in which we have species there are very diverse characteristics because Within a species, there may be very little differences. So it should not happen that the work which you have carried out on some other species, but you are saying it is a tabac. It should not happen. That is the risk factor. Yes. So you just confirm that the, the species on which you are going to work, that is tabac. Okay. 